All right, guys, welcome back to another video where today, as you can see, we are in the messy basement fish room. Um, still haven't got a contractor in to do the basement fish room build out that will be going on behind there. Um, but still plenty of videos to go through. So today we are actually doing a rescape on the 40 gallon. So let's take a look. All right, guys, so we will get into the video in a minute on a quick segue to something different, though. Did get a new fish for the 125 gallon that's currently residing in the 55, and that is a Geophagus surinamensis. Don't know if I've butchered that name. Who knows? Let me know in the comments um, on the pronunciation. Really, really don't know. Just going by the spelling. Um, African cichlid group also looking quality. The young male in here. You can kind of see him there, the glare's shocking. But once we get into the new fish room, I'll get some lighting for this guy so we can see him a little better. But you know, you can kind of see there, he's looking pretty quality. But today, we're gonna to be rescaping this monstrosity. As you can see, when we move this tank, loads of aqua soil moved and kind of destroyed it. Um, and I've also got some wood right now that is over here underneath the 125 that I'm wanting to use. In the 125 so i may as well waterlog it so it doesn't cause any issues like the last time i tried to put new purchased wood in the 125 i'll link that video top right hand side of your screen now and um as you can see from the thumbnail if you click on it it didn't end well so we're just gonna basically throw that wood in here and try and make somewhat of a of a biotype um, South American obviously a lot of wood maybe get some tannins from it some sand for them to sift through and hopefully the keel cichlid and um, the angel fish in particular will kind of feel at home in here and you know we'll just go from there so let's get it going first things first we just bought the wood from the store so we can't fit it in the tank height wise unless I take the base off so I'm gonna quickly just unscrew those with the drill and then we're gonna get moving on and we'll probably reattach this slate back to the wood, um, but probably in a different position. And you'll see that later in the video once we kind of figure out what we are uh, wanting to do aquascape wise. So now that's done, I can start to dismantle um, all the plants, rocks, wood in this tank. And obviously we're gonna use Darth Vader slipper to hold the lid open you can buy these from amazon they're only 10.99 no i'm joking i don't know where my mother-in-law got them but i'm a pretty big star wars fan so love the gift but yeah who knows where she got them probably tj maxx if i know anything about her so we're firstly just going to start by draining some of the water i'm going to try and get some of the aqua soil off the sand and hopefully reuse a little bit of the sand i'm not sure if that'll work um, an absolute treat we might need to Kind of take all the sand out and put brand new stuff in i'm just going to see how it goes and you know hopefully i might be able to reuse some of it but we'll see i'm wanting this tank to basically be a really cool tank and kind of give me an idea of what i want to do in the 125 and hopefully i can then transition this idea and this look over to the 125 depending on how the rocks look how the sand looks and that kind of thing so let's get cracking and uh, tear down the tank all right, so we got most of the aqua soil up. Now we're gonna start getting the plants. Some of these plants will be used in this aquascape. It's mainly gonna be an epiphyte um, aquascape. So Java fern, Anubius, I've got some Anubius petite. Um, I've got some Bulbitus as well, although that is tiny right now, super slow grower. Um, but they're the plants that we're gonna be using, you know, just stuck to the wood or in between the wood and the rocks. And I think that'll give that a natural look. Some of the crypts that I've got in here and then the dwarf aquarium lily will be going in the 55 gallon angel fish tank that you can see next door. Um, so we're gonna pick them out, transfer those guys over, and then we'll be catching the fish and taking out the rest of the decoration, including the wood and the rocks. Thank you. 
So just a side note for if you're doing this stuff at home, this is some new sand, we've got some water in this bucket and then the plants and a sponge filter in that bucket. We're now going to catch all the fish and put them in the bucket with the sponge filter. That's just going to keep the water aerating. The surface agitation is also going to help with oxygen exchange so they're not going to have any issues breathing while they're in the bucket. And hopefully this will only take me 45 minutes to an hour to rescape this tank and then we can go from there. So as you can see here, we are using the double net method. Um, I've shown you this on a previous video. I'll link that top right hand side of your screen now as well. But as you can see, this just um, kind of mitigates the stress that the fish go under just because you kind of trap them rather than chase them. Um, in my opinion, there is nothing worse than going to a fish store and having that fish store associate chase a fish around a tank with one net and before you know it, you get the fish home and they've nearly already had 16 heart attacks because they've just been so stressed um, <laughs> from the store employee trying to chase it and uh, catch it for the last, you know, donkey's years or however long it took to chase them. So that's it, run over, we're going to uh, catch the rest of these fish with the double net method get them in the bucket and then we're going to get to uh, escape in the tank. So after catching all the fish which did include a bristles pleco and two amano shrimp I just took a look at the tank and I basically just decided to start completely fresh so I could have saved the sand but it always looked like it had some um, like chewed up bits of wood from the pleco and and just um, random parts that I couldn't get out of it so I just basically drained the tank, took all the sand out, or the vast majority, and we're going to start from fresh. So here we go. I'm just kind of starting to look at the wood at this point, just to see what um, position I could put the wood in. You know, if it works more vertical, if it works more lateral, what kind of shapes we want to do if the wood wants to go in the center of the tank or on the right or on the left. And as you can see, I eventually just threw the wood in there and just figured it out really really quickly and this is basically the name of the scape which is shipwreck cove um as you can see in a moment once i put this wood in to me it looks like a shipwreck you've got the real front of the ship that comes up and then it looks like the mast of the ship is kind of fallen away and broken and that's kind of in the middle so you'll see what i mean in a minute but i think it looks really really cool and once I got set on the idea of how I wanted it, I went ahead and drilled the screws back into the wood to make sure it stayed submerged in the tank. After doing that, sadly all the scaping process um, got wiped from the camera so it's just going to be a quick sharp shot of kind of looking at this you're not going to get the full scaping process but you will get the final product so i hope you enjoyed the cinematic look at it um, i know i certainly did creating this video and, and this tank so show you a little cinematic shot and then i'll show you what it looked like a week or two later because the um, tannins of the wood really seeped into the tank and i think it looks awesome so let's take a look at the finished product once it's all filled up
So about one week later, this is how the tank's looking guys. This is just from the wood releasing all the tannins into the water. And I think this just looks absolutely awesome and just really, really natural. I don't know if this is tanning related. It, you know, it probably isn't. I'm probably talking out of my mm, right now. Um, but I have noticed that uh, some of the Anubius leaves have really started to, to come on and I've noticed a little explosion in their growth and the angelfish is definitely seeming more relaxed and showing his more dominant and really vibrant coloration, especially the, the lateral stripes or the vertical, vertical stripes that he's got on him and he's just looking awesome. So let me know in the comments um, what your preference is if you like this tank when it was clear water or whether you like it now with some of the tannins in it. Um, I could personally go either way but I definitely am seeing some benefits from the tannins. Um, so let me know what you think in the comments. And if you've stuck with us till this point in the video, make sure you give it a like, hit that subscribe button because we've got plenty more things coming, including some new aquascape, some new fish, some brand new setups, and obviously the brand new fish room that we are currently building. We're hoping that work starts in that in the next few weeks. So we'll see, and then we'll take you through the whole process of moving everything in, setting up all the tanks and that kind of thing. So. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of that. Hopefully you've enjoyed this one and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.